Still motivated? Good. Well, we've kind of gone through the psychology and the theory stuff. Now let's look at how we can apply those theories in practice. One of the most important things you can do as a manager is to empower your people. Where possible, let them set their own goals, make their own decisions. You want to be careful that you're not giving up your authority as a manager, but you do want to empower your people. It's a very powerful, not to overuse the word power, but it's a very powerful motivator. Instead of being the boss, what you become is the coach. You're guiding them. You help them to grow. Now, people are going to, when you do this, are going to be looking at you, and they're going to tell if you're being phony about this. So you've got to be really sincere about this. You really want to help your people grow. You want to want to see that they can get promoted. Hey, people are going to want to work for you if you can help them get promoted. Right? They'll say, oh, wow, look at all the people that work for Frank there. And, and every time they work for him, those people get promoted. I want to go work for him. I'm motivated to work. Right? You want to be the leader, right? the coach. Now, other things that businesses do to try and meet some of these needs and motivations are they might have different ways of working. Some people might work, for example, 40 hours in 40 days, give people three-day weekends all the time. That can be a powerful motivator. I've seen cases where you do 80 hours in nine days, and then you get days off, right? Then you get... Uh, I've seen people, I've seen crazy stuff that doesn't work, where you work four days during the 40 hours in the day, get three days off, and then you work four days at night, night shift, and get three days off. That kind of stuff is not necessarily motivated. But you might want to accommodate people. This is more a Hertzberg kind of thing, right? Some of these things. The work environment is more a Hertzberg hygiene factor. But you might allow people to have a flexible work schedule. Come in later or earlier and leave earlier or later. Now, the core hours is the idea that if you do have flexible work hours, you want to make sure that there's times when everybody is still available. You want to make sure, for example, that you can have meetings. So maybe you will allow people to come in early and leave late as long as they work eight hours plus an hour for lunch. But everybody needs to be around, say, between 1 and 3 o'clock. That way you can schedule meetings and people will have a time to get together even informally if they need to. Other things that people do, and I've seen this sometimes, is job sharing. You have two people do the same job. Instance I saw of this was actually a supervisory position where there was one superv supervisor worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the other supervisor came in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That was very hard, and these people were very motivated to make it work. Think about having different supervisors come in, and they overlapped on Wednesday so that they could be consistent, and they kept in touch the other days when they weren't in, just to make sure that they're giving their people good direction. But that can be a tough thing. And of course, there's telecommuting, allowing people to work at home. That allows you to sit and do work like I'm doing right now, and you can sit here in your shorts and do work. Not always the best. Um, they found out that uh, people tend not to be necessarily as productive. You get caught up by looking at other things. You can look at cat videos or something on YouTube. Or I look outdoors and I decide I want to go out and do something. Melissa Mayer used to be, was one of the first employees at Google, and she became the CEO of Yahoo. And when she came in, she ended all telecommuting. She just said, it's not productive, and people are taking advantage of those kinds of things. We'll see. It, ha it does have its uses. Different types of rewards that you can give people. Well, there's merit pay. That's for doing well. I can have an incentive plan. Peace rate is if you produce so much, I will give you so much pay. I could share profits. 
I can help share if you reduce costs. Sometimes you might put your compensation at risk. I have a base pay, but you could get a bonus. The bonus might be based upon your performance or the company's performance or sometimes both. Sales commissions. I give you a base pay, but you're going to make more the more you sell. Another type of reward, and we've talked about this in the past, is simply time off. People value personal time. But a key comp component or key thing to remember in terms of motivation is many people want visible rewards. It's not sufficient just to say, hey, great job, uh, but you're on, but you're getting this secret award. People want to be able to go home and say, look what I got, or tell their friends or their co-workers. Things you can do. Uh, I just mentioned this game sharing. You, have, you can share the cost savings with people, or you can have profit sharing. Awards, such as parking places, plaques, talked about this before, just visible recognition. ESOPs, these are employee stock ownership programs. Basically, you grant stock to people. You just give stock to your employees, not to anybody, but to your employees. The idea behind that is you motivate people to do well on, in the company's behalf, not just your behalf. So if you're walking around and you see something that's not right, you don't go, oh, that's not my job to pick up that piece of trash or whatever. You go, oh, wow, or I can help this customer. It's not my job, but if I help this customer, I help the company, and my stock is worth more, the stock that the company gave me. Stock options are a grant that the company gives you to be able to buy stock in the future at a particular price. It's kind of difficult to describe, but I'll give you a simple example. Let's suppose that the stock price today is $30 for a share of your company stock. I give you the option to buy those shares of stock, a thousand shares of stock at $30. Well, big deal. Today I can buy those $30 by just by, for $30 by just by calling my broker. But five years from now, if that stock doubles to $60, I can buy it at 30 still because of the stock option that was given me. So I buy 30,000 shares of stock for $30 and I can sell them for 60. I just made $30,000 and I didn't even have to spend any of my own money. So stock options can be very powerful motivators. They're very powerful, especially for executives. Executives like stock options. And that's been a big change since 2008. 2008, there are a lot of company executives, they got big bonuses, even while their company's stock was going in the tank. And people said, hey, that's not right. So companies restructured their incentives and gave smaller base salaries to their executives, but increased the stock options. Well, then when companies started doing really well, people were complaining, oh, look how wealthy these companies are making. They're, they're executives, right? Well, but when the company doesn't do well, those stock options are worthless. If the stock goes down, stock price goes down, they don't get that money. And so in 2020, when the coronavirus hits and stocks just went in the dumper, so did a lot of executive pay. And I can put money in bonuses. I can put deferred compensation. This is compensation that you will get at some point in the future if you meet particular measures. Golden parachutes is a term you may hear. This is kind of uh, to help employees or particular executives if they leave, if, if they're fired. They're given a golden parachute. In other words, they're given money for leaving. Not sure that's a great thing. I would, uh, if, if it doesn't work out, I'd say go. But sometimes it's good if you have a merger, for example, and you have to get rid of some executives, you want to give them an incentive to go. 
and those would be called golden parachutes. All right, that covers motivation, a brief overview of many of the theories and practices. You should know the different theories ranging from Maslow to equity, and there's obviously a lot of terms in here that are very useful.